Monday, October 3rd, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at why uh, having some uh, physical gold and silver outside the system will go a long way in protecting uh, pensioners, I would say. Uh, we've seen the uh, crisis here in the UK, the uh, defined benefit uh, pension uh, system almost collapsed. And I think uh, it's not just here in the UK, it's everywhere around the West. And we'll talk about why that is so. And of course, this is just my opinion. It's not financial advice. So before I start, I'd like to make a, a, a few announcements. Today uh, is my, my birthday. Uh, the other thing that's happening today in terms of uh, uh, important dates is uh, German Reunification Day. Uh, I think that was back in maybe 1990 uh, or 91. I don't remember. And it's October 3rd as well. Um, yeah, it was uh, the day that uh, West Germany and East Germany uh, got back together after World War II. And uh, it was a very important day in terms of the geopolitics, uh, in terms of West and East. And it still has uh, huge repercussions today, <laughs> especially with what's happening uh, with Ukraine. And I also like to, uh, uh, to tell you that uh, my wife and I are going away tomorrow for a week. Uh, Billy is going to be looked after well, don't worry. Uh, but uh, I will probably make a, a few videos when I'm a, away, but not as many as uh, one a day. We'll have to see. And um, yes, and the, the last announcement is to let you know that, uh, especially for my North American uh, viewers, that I'm affiliated with Miles Franklin. Uh, they're one of the uh, top precious metals uh, or bullion dealers in North America. And uh, all the details of how to get in touch with them uh, are below in the description and also our uh, referral code with them. <laughs> and this was by popular demand from, from the viewers is Billy. So very simple referral code. For my UK viewers, uh, of course, Gold Investments, promo code Maneco64. Um, Yes, uh, I think it's more important than ever uh, with what's going on in the world to have a little bit, if you can, uh, of monetary protection outside the system. So let's look at some uh, of the news just before I go into uh, why I think gold and silver is so important and, and the pension uh, system is under threat. Well, we, we've seen... Uh, Overnight that uh, the government here in the UK is back down on its promise to uh, do away with a top rate of uh, tax of 45%. That's what people pay on anything they earn above 150000 And I think uh, it goes to show that it's all political. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference. I think they're saving uh, two to well, they're not saving. They're just taking more and more from the taxpayer. About two to three billion a year, which is a drop in the ocean uh, compared to how much the government spends. They spend like a, a trillion, I would say, about fifty percent of GDP. And uh, it just goes to show that the whole political establishment they want to keep control over you. Am I saying that the Quartang and Truss budget was a good one? No, but at least they're trying to cut taxes. Their their problem was that they couldn't, uh, they can't really cut anything. And uh, two and three billion, as I said, is peanuts. And if you look at uh, where they spend the money, uh, it's in a, I mean, the, the bulk of it is uh, health, the NHS, uh, which they increased massively in the last two years. And the NHS, I would say, is non-functional now. You can't even see a GP. Uh, they don't want to like treat you. Uh, it's a waste. I'm sure they could have cut a lot there. Uh, but more interestingly, there is a, a part here where they call other, uh, which is the biggest. <laughs> and uh, what is other? Well, I found out what it is, and it's a. Uh, it's basically 
all the welfare expenditure, housing, community amenities, environment protection, culture and religion. I mean, I'm sure they can find a lot to cut there. But um, I think the UK political establishment is still under the thumb of the globalists. Uh, they don't want you to be uh, self-reliant and self-sufficient. Am I saying that's what uh, Truss and Quartang were trying to do? Well, even if they were, uh, they, they were stopped very quickly from doing it. And uh, I, I would say the uh, FT uh, is one of the globalist mouthpieces. And uh, Martin Wolf castigated uh, this budget. And he just showed his true colors because he wants you to own nothing and be happy. But anyway, back to the pension situation. And yes, this was in the UK, uh, final salary, defined benefit pensions, but also in, in private pensions, as I've said recently. For example, when I started mine in the 90s, I was told by the financial advisor, by uh, the time you retire, you, you should have this amount in your pot and you should be getting a, about 8% uh, return. Uh, every year and at the time rates were like six seven so I thought yeah that sounds reasonable eight percent but in the last 15 years in a world of manipulated interest rates of QE uh, uh, rates near zero government bonds also yielding almost nothing these pension systems had to leverage themselves through derivatives. And, and derivatives, of course, are always uh, leveraged. Uh, and I worked in the city for uh, 20 years in the derivatives market, in uh, financial uh, futures and options. And uh, yes, uh, they're usually leveraged about 20 to one. So you, you can bet uh, a pound and control 20 pounds worth of uh, a notional amount. Yes, you can lose your shirt, but you can also make a lot of money. And uh, I think the whole city of London, uh, all the mainstream economists, they, they've been uh, under the impression that the regime or the trend of lower, ever lower interest rates uh, and yields were going to continue, that things couldn't turn, that rates would never go uh, back up uh, above 2 or 3 percent. Uh, because they thought inflation was dead because they don't know what inflation is. The fact that uh, you've been uh, the Bank of England and the government have been printing money and deficit spending for over a decade. They didn't think that uh, really mattered. But now things have turned and a lot of people were caught um, short <laughs> or they were caught with a lot of leverage and uh, it almost brought the pension system down. So the Bank of England had to announce last week that they're going to do 65 billion of QE over a couple of weeks. That's not going to be enough. Enough. Uh, they're going to have to keep doing more and more QE. It's probably going to be permanent because if they stop, uh, yields are going to continue to go down in price and the yields are going to continue to rise. And uh, what that will do eventually, it's not happening overnight, is that the pound uh, and other currencies as well, because they're going to have to do this everywhere. They're going to continue to lose value versus real things. That's what that's what it's all about. And uh, yes, people might be getting their final salary pensions or whatever in five, ten years. They might be continuing to get it. But Eventually, it's not going to be buying you much, just like in countries like Brazil and others like third world countries, people who were promised pensions uh, at a certain level 20, 30 years ago. Nowadays, it's a fraction of what they were promised in real terms. Yes, and there's also the uh, possibility that the whole thing actually that the Bank of England could uh, that investors and uh, people could lose complete faith and confidence in the central banks and uh, the whole system could implode very quickly and, and then you get no pension at all and the only thing you you have 
uh, if you've uh, stacked uh, gold and silver is gold and silver. And that, uh, of course, will be able to be used in whatever fashion to uh, survive. And uh, I tweeted out uh, yesterday about this, or was it, um, yeah, it was yesterday, I think, or it could have been, no, I think it was yesterday. And uh, someone uh, replied to the tweet, said, oh, you can't eat gold and silver. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, you can't eat your pension. It has to be cashed. So that's the way I see it. And uh, in the U.S., I'm not too sure how the pension uh, system works, but I, I do have an anecdotal evidence of someone I knew and uh, unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was a very good friend of my father and uh, quite a, a wealthy, uh, from a wealthy family. And he had like a, his money with a, a Wall Street bank and he wasn't much into banking, but he had the money there. And he said, uh, and this was over 10 years ago, well, I'm getting uh, three quarters of a percent a month uh, interest, not annualized, but a month. And I said, well, that's very good, actually, three quarters of a percent. And he said, yes, my, uh, my savings or pension, uh, they're investing in hedge funds. And I thought to myself, I didn't say anything to him because I didn't really want to... Uh, uh, you know, like uh, get into the discussion. and uh, But I thought that was always strange. So how many more of these uh, pensions in the U.S. are really uh, under pressure? And uh, I listened to uh, King World News. Uh, he, uh, Eric King, interviewed Nomi Prince, and she was talking about how in the U.S. a lot of these uh, pension schemes are investing in private equity, and I'm sure they're also investing in hedge funds. And hedge funds are not safe. They don't hedge, really. They, they just leverage and speculate. Um, I remember back in the 90s uh, when hedge funds were picking up or growing, a growing industry. Uh, when I uh, tried to open an account at ABN Emerald Bank, uh, a futures account for uh, a guy I knew who was starting a hedge fund, they didn't want to know. They said, oh, it's too risky, hedge funds. But now even pensions are putting their money into hedge funds. And uh, I think it's a, a very dangerous place, really. And, and that's why I think it's very important to have some uh, monetary insurance, i.e. gold and silver outside the system. Uh, the other thing about private equity is that uh, usually their investments are in non-marketable uh, investments. What does that mean? Well, they don't invest in the stock market. They invest in private companies and uh, other such things. And it's very hard for them to liquidate uh, that investment. It's not a liquid, uh, marketable investment. And, and that could be a huge problem as well. So right now it looks like things have calmed down. But I don't think we are out of the woods yet. Uh, we're supposed to have an emergency meeting at the Federal Reserve today. Do I care? Not really, because the, the Fed will have to uh, change uh, tack uh, either way. If it's today or tomorrow or in a month, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because the Bank of England and also the ECB have shown that uh, you can't expect to inflate the system system monumentally for over 15 years and then reverse everything really quickly. Uh, their fault was all the QE, all the money printing, all the deficit spending we've had since the 08 crisis. It was bailing out everything. That was the mistake. And uh, we can't get out of it now. So with that, let's quickly uh, look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 8.30 uh, a.m. Uh, London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at uh, 1663. It's up only a, a couple of dollars. High has been 1670. Low has been 1659. Spot silver, on the other hand, is doing relatively well. It's up 1.6% at 1933. It's up 30 cents. High has been 53, and the low has been just below 19. The Dow Futures is up 115 points. NASDAQ 100 future is down about 10 points. 
The uh, S&P 500 is up uh, 10 points. Uh, the FTSE 100 index is down 55 points or three quarters of a percent. And the Euro stocks 50 uh, is down 33 or 1 percent. Uh, to the currencies, uh, sterling has rebounded. It, it's quite volatile. It's been as uh, low as 110.85 and as high as 112.82. Right now we're at 112. It's up a third of a percent. Uh, the euro is up 0.1 at 98.10. Uh, dollars up uh, 0.15 versus the yen at 114.95. The uh, dollars unchanged versus the Swiss franc 98.62. And talking about Swiss franc, a lot of speculation about. Uh, uh, Credit Suisse, and uh, I see here that their shares have fallen another 20% on the open. We'll have to see what develops there. But one thing I would say for people who have deposits with Credit Suisse of more than 100,000 Swiss francs, not just people, but corporations or any kind of organization, uh, all that uh, money above 100,000 is in peril because Switzerland also has the bail in rules, and that's the insured amount is 100,000 Swiss francs. And now to the yuan. And yes, there's talk about that China is going to dump the dollar. Uh, I think it's slightly different. Uh, it's not the Chinese government uh, dumping uh, their official dollar reserves. But uh, it's the uh, Chinese government telling uh, government-owned um, institutions to try to... Uh, unwind some of their dollars to kind of stabilize the currency. I'm not sure if this means that China is going to uh, get rid of all their treasuries right away. But even if it isn't, I, I, I think over the long term, a, a lot of these countries outside the West, outside NATO, uh, are going to move away from the dollar because they don't want to be um, in danger of being sanctioned. Uh, as Russia has, and I think that's going to continue. But the news that we, we saw last week is it's an article from Business Insider. I'm not sure it's that significant. I could be wrong, <laughs> but uh, that's the way I look at it. So to the other currencies, uh, we've got uh, the uh, Aussie dollar up two thirds of a percent at 64.44. Uh, we've got the dollar down uh, over half a percent versus the Canadian dollar, uh, 137.50. And uh, the Kiwi dollar is up uh, almost 1% at 56.50. Let's move on to the uh, general commodities. Yeah, I saw that uh, OPEC Plus is talking about cutting oil production by at least a million barrels. So WTI crude is up 3.5% overnight, just below 82. Uh, Brent is up 3.2% uh, at 87.88. High-grade copper is down 1%, 337. U.S. Nat gas is down 1.8% at 668. Let's check the uh, European TTF or Dutch Nat gas futures. Uh, that's down almost 5% at uh, 180, excuse me. Uh, finish off with the uh, Treasury market. Um, U.S. 10-year uh, yield is at 378. That's down, down two basis points uh, overnight. And the look at the, the gilt, gilt market or U.K. government bond market. The two-year yield uh, right now is down actually 14 basis points at 414. So this announcement uh, of uh, this top rate tax scrapping uh, is kind of helped, but uh, I'm not too sure. I think the, the uh, government bond market is still very volatile and it's going to be the market that we need to keep an eye on. This is what it's all about, the government bond market right now and not just in the UK. Uh, the 30 year, well, that's down another seven basis points at 376. But uh, yeah, still way above where we were like a, a couple of years ago. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing uh, to my channel if you haven't yet. 
And uh, with that, I wish you all a great uh, rest of the day and a great uh, rest of the week. Take care. Bye.